In today's video, we're opening the rest of the Infinite Forbidden case to try to pull these cards that I need, like Millennium Shield, please. What is up, everybody? We're back with the rest of the Infinite Forbidden case. We've opened three boxes so far on the channel. I have nine left to be opened up. Shout out to Frontline Games who uh, gave me this case to open up for them. So it's been a lot of fun so far. There's a lot of cards that I want to pull that I have not pulled yet. The goal is to pull Millennium Shield in general, like in the Ultra. We have not pulled an Ultra yet. Surely a case will have one, right? Right? But I also want to get that Dark Magician QCR. I want to get the Cosmo Queen. That's got to be a QCR, right? There's a lot of different ones that I want to pull. Light and Darkness in Dragon, whatever, thing, whatever that thing's called. But before we get into it, before I fit, reveal this pack, we have a giveaway. I'll be giving away a booster box of this set. So just like the video, be subscribed, turn on notifications. Let me know down below your favorite card in the set. Let's get to it. No pack trick today because we have nine pa uh, nine boxes to open. Not quite a full case opening, starting off an ultra rare. Not bad. Not quite a full case opening, but we do have nine boxes and it will be a full case opening if you include those last three. There are so many cards that I want to pull out of here. And by the way, we will be going live to do this stream to open as many of these as we need to for the Millennium Shield. I got a lot of cases this time. There we go. We have a, uh, a stellar right off the bat. Secret rare. As many as we need to open to get the QCR Millennium Shield. It should be pretty, pretty insane. Should be pretty epic. I'm hopefully we can pull it. I, I guess I should have decided this for the video. I guess I'm going to be live tomorrow because the Nationals going on. So it makes it kind of weird. You know, it's like the Nationals happening. I, it's kind of a weird mix of a lot of people will be there. So they're not going to be watching the stream. So is it a good time to do it? But at the same time, I don't want to wait too long because Sunday people are going to be at the National too. So I don't want to wait till Monday. I don't think to do the opening. I don't think uh, I, yeah, it's hard to say, but let, let's just do it on Saturday. Let's make that the plan. People can watch between their rounds. I don't know. I don't know what we're going to do. I, it'll be fun. And, and for you guys who are not at the National. Oh, Vean Smith tagged or tracked. Very nice secret rare. For you guys who are not at the National, you guys can uh, hang out with me on the stream. It's going to be pretty epic. It's going to be fun. We're going to pull that Millennium Shield. Hopefully we will pull it nice and early and get it over with, you know, just in the first case and, you know, just be done. Even though the thing is, even if we could, did pull it early, we would have a lot of other cards to potentially go for because there's a lot of awesome QCRs in this set that I want to pull. Like the most there's probably ever been outside of like rarity collection, obviously, because they had so many different ones. But Fiend Smith track, that's the same card. That's kind of weird. I think Fiend Smith has some pretty expensive cards. So that's pretty nice. We pretty much want to pull as many Fiend Smith cards as possible. If you guys like this set as well, don't forget to check out uh, my affiliate link down below. Fiend Smith Engraver. This is a great opening right now. <laughs> a lot of Fiend Smith. Make sure to check out my uh, affiliate link down below. Get 5% off using my code of both either your case. Another Fiend Smith card. Okay. Secret rare. This is pretty crazy, actually. That's four in a row. Secret rares. But yeah, get 5% off your case or box. And you guys can uh, support the channel doing that. And hopefully you'll pull as many Fiend Smith cards as I am right now. And maybe some retrain cards that are nostalgic and awesome as well i kind of like that they made a lot of them commons too so it's not like taking up a good card slot we have oh diabelle dude this opening is crazy absolutely crushing right now like absolutely crushing this is pretty wild uh we have the mimi gold dragon i'm getting texts from rhyme style about his psa grades i should have put on do not disturb because i'm getting distracted by the texts so, Ryan, this is all your fault that I'm distracted already four minutes into the video, probably less than four minutes because I we probably cut out a bunch of stuff at the beginning. So honestly, it's probably like three minutes, two minutes into the video. There's a ultra rare. Finally, still not the ultra of the Millennium Shield. Can we please pull it? Once we pull it, I need to make a short and have like me pulling the Millennium Shield uh, from McDonald's. You guys remember how many we pulled that one opening? It's like it has like a ton of views. It has like 300,000 or 400,000 views. It's an old video. We pulled five Millennium Shield in one opening. It was insane. It was like 45. It was a 47 packs. That's what it was. because They kept three sealed because I was like, we pulled every. We actually didn't pull Cosmo Queen, though. And there was no Cosmo Queen. There must have been something about that set where like the packs were kind of separated and like they would all be all Millennium Shield or all Cosmo Queen because I got them all from the same place and they ended up being all Millennium Shield. So I'm like, maybe that was, they were kind of like clumped together. You know, we know clumping now a lot better than we did back then. Back then we didn't have any idea what that meant. We're just little kids. But now it's like I pulled five Millennium Shield and no Cosmo Queen out of 47 packs. And then I opened the other three later. Actually, I think I might have one more and they did not have Cosmo Queen. So it's a little interesting how that happens. Uh, but that was that man. I wish I could open that many McDonald's packs again. That was pretty amazing. They were not that expensive either back then. They were like under 10 bucks a pop, I feel like. But I actually can't remember. It might have been 20. But it's been so long, I cannot remember. But even then, 20, 10, 20 bucks for those is pretty sweet. Even though there's only two cards, 
Uh, it's still really fun. We have these super rare. Oh man, this is kind of crazy. We have opened this many packs. We have not pulled an ultra rare Millennium Shield yet. No, I don't know. What if we pulled the QCR before the ultra? That could happen. That could happen. That would be really weird, but it definitely could happen. Uh, I do I do kind of not want to pull the QCR out of this one, though, because this is not for me. This is for uh, Frontline. So pulling Frontline, yeah, it's just, it'd be kind of weird. Pulling them a QCR, and then I'd be like, well, I guess I got to open for another, which I, I guess I would do that anyway. If we pull them a QCR Millennium Shield, I'd probably just open another. I would just open more Lot in the Life and just because there's more things I want anyway and just hope I get another one because like I'd have the pull, but I wouldn't have the card, you know, and you'd be like, ah, it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough right there. You need the card when it when it comes. Oh, the Unstoppable Exodia. I've not pulled this one. This is the cover card. The Unstoppable Exodia Incarnate. Let's see what this says. Five forbidden one monsters cannot be destroyed by an opponent's card effect. Once per turn, if this card battles during damage calc, you can make this card gain attack equal to your life points. Whoa, okay. Once per turn, when a spell trap card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can negate that activation once per turn during the end phase. You can set one Exod or obliterate spell trap from your deck. Once per turn during the semi phase, lo lose a thousand life points. Okay, you got to win quick with that thing. But honestly, it seems pretty strong because if your life points are at 8,000, you're at 8K. You can negate a spell trap. What was the other thing? Oh yeah, setting uh, obliterate cards, which they, I think there are some new ones, right, in this set. So probably were some old ones. I'm not 100% sure, but that seems like it'd be a pretty fun deck to try. Like try, try to whip out Exodia. Five Forbidden One Monsters. Probably pretty easy to do at this point when you can put stuff in the graveyard. There's probably some sort of spell you can use for the graveyard to fuse. It's not like drawing all the cards. That's a little bit harder. Uh, yeah, so that's probably not too crazy to do. We have Mimigul. What was this? Volmina. That's a cool. That's like a ghost dragon. That's like a ghost rare right there. Except it's a common. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Okay, I need to. Oh, Mimigul Master. Man, there's some, there's some cool cards in here. All right. Let's keep it rolling okay man I, it is really hard not to rux the special when you open the side side scroller way and the side scroller way it is really hard not to rux the special let me just tell you it goes right to it every time dart magic mirror force if you guys enjoyed yesterday's video by the way we're trying to match up the cards let me know if we can try something like that in the future if they do more retrains because they tend to do them pretty consistently in core sets they don't necessarily do them as much as they did in this set but i, I could see them doing it again uh okay these sinful spoils so many packs to be open today but so many more to be open tomorrow so do not miss it do not miss the epicness that will be tomorrow opening a lot of infinite forbidden and yeah we're gonna have better luck than we did with terminal revenge just keep that in mind we're gonna have better luck we are not gonna be searching for the millennium shield in like three weeks it's like we were with the magia even though millennium shield's probably gonna be like a 30 dollar card it's still way more worth it. It's going to be epic. It's going to be just like when I was a young lad and went to McDonald's and I searched. Well, I didn't actually search. I just, oh, yes, just like when I was a young lad, I went to McDonald's and I pulled the Millennium Shield. Let's go. Ultra rip. This, is, this comes in a QCR. Comes in a QCR. This is not the QCR, but this is exciting. This is our first time pulling the Ultra, the retrain of Millennium Shield. I really need to pull my PSA 10 out and have that for the case opening so we can just be like, yes, let's go. That's amazing. That's exciting. First time pulling that. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Millennium Shield, right as I was talking about being a young lad. Exodia Incarnate. The unstoppable Exodia Incarnate, I should say. He's unstoppable. Don't forget to mention that. Uh, we have the Mimi Ghoul Maker. All right, all right. Spell card Soul Exchange. The soul has been exchanged for the Millennium Shield. I need to actually read the Millennium Shield. I guess I should do that, you know? Oh, Millennium. Oh, the Millennium Unk. That's amazing. That's awesome. I haven't seen that card yet. Okay, let me read the Millennium Shield. I haven't read it yet. Cannot be destroyed by spell trap effects. Let's go. You can only use each of the following effects of Shield of Millennium Destiny once per turn. This card is in your hand. You can place it in your spell trap zone as a face-up continuous spell. While this card is a continuous spell, you can either pay 2k and reveal one Millennium Onk in your hand. So, oh, a perfect timing to actually read this. Special summon this card. Then you can add one Millennium Onk from your deck to your hand. Either pay 2k or reveal Millennium Onk. Okay, so when a special summon, you add Millennium Onk. Okay, wait, wait. Now we got to read this. Show five forbidden one monster cards from your hand. Wait, this is this is in the Exodia deck. You play the Millennium Shield. Okay. Then special summon one of the unstoppable monster ex uh, Exodia incarnate from your extra deck. Then shuffle the face up monster cards you control into the deck. Except Exodia monster cards whose original levels are ten or higher. And Millennium monster cards. Also, you cannot summon for the rest of the turn summon at all not special summon after activation shuffle this card into the deck instead of sending it to the graveyard it says okay the good part about this it says 
You cannot special summon after this. It doesn't say you could only do this like one summon per turn. So like you can special summon before and then activate it versus like some cards say you can do it, but that's it. So like no matter when you activate it, that can be your only summon. So if you summon before that, it's not activatable anymore. Kind of like Red Eyes Fusion. So that is cool that this actually is a combo with the Exodia cards. So the Millennium Shield is actually part of the Exodia deck. That's pretty sick. That's pretty sick. Makes me like it even more. All right, super rare. That is dope. That is dope. Okay, so we've we've pulled some big cards so far. We've pulled some big. We we've actually pulled really well so far. We pulled all kinds of crazy stuff. The ex okay, we got to get the Exodia QCR too. That's another one. Like that's a QCR. I'm pretty sure. I mean, there's no way it's not. It's the cover. Well, last time they, they did the cover card as only a QCR. Now they could do it as not a QCR. <laughs> That'd be kind of interesting. They also have uh the what's he called the the dragon of love and thunder or whatever it's called i don't remember what it's called but the one that's going to be probably in the next four core sets that one's pretty cool as well i would like to pull that even though it is going to get uh they said they, they never reprint qcrs then they just make a alternate art or one with a different colored background so it's kind of hard to believe them when they say they're not going to reprint qcrs but i guess they don't have as much time to do it anymore and it's going to end so i don't know i guess they're not going to actually do it we'll see when they get to uh Whatever that set's called, the uh, the Bonanza, the Banana set, the uh, Rarity Collection Banana. All right, we have the Mimi Goal Maker. This might be my favorite core set. Is this my favorite core set since they've since I've gotten back to Yu-Gi-Oh? What are my other options? Battles of Chaos is up there. I think this clears Battles of Chaos. Well, Battles of, Battles of Chaos had some nice ones. I think this clears it though, for me at least, personally. Not in terms of like playability or anything, just like just having fun cards that I like. And the fact that Millennium Shield being in the Exodia deck, I mean, how much more can you ask for right there? How much more can you ask for? That's freaking insane. Okay, there's a Silhouette Rabbit. I've not seen that yet. Uh, Okay, yeah, so this, this might be my favorite. I think Battles of Chaos is up there core set wise i mean age of overlord was great and everything had a lot of great cards i loved how like expensive a lot of the cards were that was super fun to like try to pull the big sp little knight and stuff wanted secret of the simple spoils when it came out but another silhouette rabbit that's kind of weird uh <laughs> kind of creepy too like he's like hey, 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 hey. i'm gonna hurt you in your dreams all right uh yeah so those are nice but i mean having stuff like exodia as a qcr millennium shield as a qcr a dark magician guy as a as a qcr all in here the thing about battles of chaos is it was kind of like this in that way because it had blue eyes jet dragon it had jet dragon starlight rare it had the dark magician starlight rare it had the um illusion of chaos starlight rare and so having all of those plus like the regular versions was pretty cool but the thing is, this is a QCR set, so there's so many more opportunities. There's Exodia, there's Light and Darkness Dragons Retrain, there is the Millennium Shield. I think Cosmo Queen, I keep saying that. I, I mean, hopefully Cosmo Queen has one, but it's a common, so maybe not. Um, Cosmo Queen, I can't even remember all of them. That I, Oh yeah, the, the dragon thing that is, is going to be in four sets, probably. I mean, there's just so many of them. It, it, you just can't compare with the Starlight set, because they only have five Starlights, so unless all five are bangers, which there was like four bangers in that one in uh, Battles of Chaos plus the Dark Magician, so it was like five bangers. This has more options for bangers, which is pretty crazy to say, because I mean, Battles of Chaos was all bangers. So I'm, another thing is like, when this is the cover of the set right here, I mean, just look at it. Look at the cover. Covers sell, like some of the cooler looking covers. And, and when they when they pay off too, and like they have options inside that you can actually pull. Like if you can pull, you can pull the Exodia guy on the front. Like, and it's it's not like Magio where it's gonna be one in one in a hundred boxes. Like, you can get this guy in lower rarity and get him in QCR. And like in a few years, I could see this just being like, oh yeah, the Exodia set, like where you could pull the Exodia guy. He was in Q, uh, the high rarity core century secret rare, which is no longer a thing because it's we're past the 25th anniversary finally. Uh I could see that being big. I mean. The thing about Yu-Gi-Oh boxes is never count on them going up because they pretty much never do. Very rarely, there's only a few sets that do. When you think about long term, if you're gonna if you're gonna think anything can go up, it's something that uh, it's something that looks like this. That looks like this. It's just straight nostalgia, awesome Exodia, awesome stuff inside that you can pull. I mean, it's just very very promising. And if the if the archetypes like Mimi Goal and the Fiendsmith are actually really awesome as well, and they give people good memories of playing them, and they're like fun to play, not garbage. I don't know how you how they play or not, but that could factor in as well so I, i'm pretty excited about this set i'm hoping that we pull the millennium shield early and keep a few of these cases sealed because i think this is actually a, a pretty promising core set do, definitely do not go buy anything based on what i said though obviously because this is an, i'm not like advising you to go do that because it's Yu 
Yu-Gi-Oh. Always keep in mind, it's probably going to go down, especially right away. They almost always immediately go down, no matter what set it is. I mean, Rarity Collection 2 went down. I mean, Rarity Collection 1 is up a little bit. That's one of the one things. But yeah, I, w I went. This is not the same. So uh, be careful when doing that, though, if you are going to buy anything and totally not because you want to take my advice and try to make a bunch of money, because that's not going to happen. But if you do want to buy some of the set, you do have the affiliate links with me. You can get a 5% discount code, whether it's going to be to open it, keep it sealed, whatever you're going to do with it. Go check that out. Get 5% off cases or sealed boxes. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun. Oh, I haven't pulled this card yet. Jin Roku. I think it's a really, a really cool set. It's exciting to have a really, really good set, especially in the middle of the summer. So sometimes summer can be, you know, pretty rough. It can be dead. Last year we had, I guess, Monstrous Revenge. Was that what we had? That was okay. That was kind of when we were like, oh my gosh, they're reprinting all the Starlights. That was when we kind of figured that out. So it was a little bit of a, a little bit of a bummer back then, but turned out fine. But this is a lot more, more exciting. What was the core set middle of last year? I don't actually remember. Core set middle of 2023. Anybody remember? Let me know in the comments. Because sometimes they, they skip a month and don't have a, a set. I feel like that might have happened in July last year. Could have been August. I don't remember. This one, they certainly did not slack off on this one. This is a very cool set. And I think they did pretty well, which is awesome to say. I love when Konami does well, because that means Yukio is doing well. Okay. What, well, I don't even know what the best... I'm guessing the one of the archetype cards is actually the best, highest, most expensive card in here. Because all the cards I'm trying to pull are probably like 20 bucks or something. They're going to be really cheap. That makes me think, though, even if we pull... Okay, 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 we got a QCR. If we pull ours and they're not like a 10 or something, I might just go around and just try to buy a bunch of them. Like if they're super cheap, like 20 or 30 bucks, I might buy like 10 of them to try to get some 10s. Uh, Because these are really awesome, like nostalgia cards. Okay, let's see. We have Sylvia the White Forest. This is a QCR right here, it seems like. Second of the case, because we pulled one on Wednesday, if you guys missed that. So uh, this will be number two. Let's see if we can pull any of the cards I want and check them off my list. Here we go, Aerial Eater. We have Service Puppet Play and Purple Exodia. This could be Exodia. Oh, our Light and Darkness Dragon. What is it? Dragon Lord. Okay. Dra I always want to say Dragonness, which makes no sense. Light and Darkness Dragon Lord. That is a beautiful card. That is so awesome. This is one I definitely want for myself as well, but that is a sweet, sweet pull. Shout out to my locals once again for letting me open this case for him. So awesome looking pull. I don't know how good this card is, so I don't know if it's going to be really expensive or not, but pretty awesome. I mean, that is a pretty awesome card. QCR, boom. Our first big hit of the video. Pretty nice. No Millennium Shield. We've now pulled two QCRs. I don't remember what the one we pulled last time was. It was probably, I think it was one of the archetype cards, so I don't remember exactly which one it was. Uh, it wasn't It wasn't any of the retrains. I mean, technically, almost everything is an archetype now, but you know what I mean by that. Ar by archetype cards, I mean like new archetypes that are coming out in this set. And I still haven't really, have I figured out the third archetype? There's usually three maybe it is the the exodia archetype they're they're counting because that's not new is it though because infinite forbidden guy i mean there's there's a bunch of different ones uh whatever his name is i can't remember exodia incarnate so i'm not 100 percent sure what the third archetype is besides well no isn't it the white forest wait mimi ghoul no, I'm forgetting the other big one that I've already said like 50 times. Yeah, Mimi Ghoul, the White Forest, and uh, 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 the big one that we pulled like a bunch of secrets for. What's it called? Dr dark something? The dark? Oh, I want to say Dark Inn. What's it called? Fiendsmith. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so Fiendsmith. So that's the three. Fiendsmith, the, the what is it? White Rose, White Forest, the something forest. Uh, Tempai Dragon. Okay, so there is some supplemental stuff for like older archetypes as well, obviously. It's like a lot of what we've been talking about. The White Rose, maybe? Is that what it's called? The Sinful Spoils. That's that's old. Okay, I keep mixing my stacks over here, so I keep having to fix that. Try to keep these organized. We have the Mimi Ghoul. Okay, there's Mimi Ghoul. White Forest. That's what it's called. So White Forest, Mimi Ghoul, Fiendsmith. Those are the three archetypes in here. It seems like overall, like White Forest has a Diabell in it. That's probably means it's not horrible. Because Di well, Diabell's in a lot of archetypes, but uh, or is it Singajin? Very nice. Okay, or are they all the same? Just connected somehow. I'm not 100 percent sure because I've never played them. Singajin. That guy has a re he's a retrain as well. That's pretty cool. That reminds you of the old school. Uh, I think you got him at. Uh, didn't you get Singajin from Toys R Us back in the day? I can't remember because I didn't get one myself because I, I wasn't allowed to go to Toys R Us. Too expensive. It was too expensive. So no Toys R Us for me. We had to just go to Walmart and stuff. So I didn't get to experience the Toys R Us. Every time I go in there, I was like, oh my goodness, this place is insane. It's like 
marketed to children. It's 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 pretty amazing. It was it was really pretty epic going in there as a kid, except that you didn't get to buy anything, or at least I didn't. I don't know about you, but I didn't get to. It was like, oh my goodness, all the video games you want, all the cards you want, bikes, you know, all this different stuff that you could play on. I mean, that was that was pretty awesome. That was a great, great spot. I rarely got to go in there, so didn't really get to experience it myself. All the toy aisles and stuff. I mean, I'm sure they had well, it's Toys R Us, so I guess they didn't really, I mean, marketed to kids makes sense, but was it just all kids stuff? It must have all been kids stuff, which pretty big market out there. There's always kids. There's always kids and they're always going to be bugging their parents to buy them new, new cards, new whatever. So it kind of makes sense that they did that, except it sucked for me because I didn't get anything. <laughs> I didn't get to be a part of that. I didn't get to be a part of it. That's all right. That's all right. Now I can just open a million packs to make up for it. Right. Right. I'll open all those old packs now at a much higher price. And uh, and then I will uh, I'll just open everything. And that way I won't have to feel like I missed anything. <laughs> Exod. OK, super rare. We want to get at least uh three qcrs because last time with the uh you know the cursed set of battle sludge and terminal revenge i only got five qcrs in two cases for my locals so they got shorted one which was a bummer i mean that felt bad okay legendary zodi incarnate the cover card very nice so i want to make sure we at least get three right let's at least get three then i'll feel okay about it if we get four it'd be great to make up for last time because normally we pull we did pull good for them we got the phantom of you bell uh qcr so that was pretty nice but it feels better when you pull the best cards you know and you get great ratios when opening for them that would be nice that would be really 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 nice if we could do that we have spell card monster reborn can we pull something okay tenpai dragon genroku we have the fiendsmith requiem only two of those pulled today i think we pulled one in another opening so we might have three in the case uh i'm guessing ratios are pretty similar where you're getting like usually two to three of each secret i'm guessing they didn't short print they don't short print core sets right they short print inside sets only i think that's the thing now they don't short print anymore except side sets that doesn't count apparently all right longer video today hopefully you guys have enjoyed it there's been a couple long videos this week because of the uh the, the last mazia hunt the last one ever i will never hunt for mazia again final time guys so hopefully you enjoy <laughs> definitely will never see me opening that set again even on the every pack opening i'm just going to delete that pack it's not going to exist so Hopefully you enjoyed the last one. Uh, okay, the Mimigool Master. And if you want to see longer videos in the future, let me know. Uh, usually the wheel videos, uh, wheeled goat, are tend to be longer as well. So they're light and darkness, dragon lord. Go check out wheeled goat. Two episodes up right now. Episode three will be coming out. We would be normally coming out today because of the new set. Uh, we're doing a case opening. Uh, or at least mo the rest of the case opening. If you want to see that, it's going to be on Sunday for episode three. That's the plan. So we're going to do the big stream tomorrow. We're going to do Sunday Wheeled Goat episode three. That is a little spoiler. We did it with Distant Coder. So keep an eye out for that one. It's been a really, really fun, fun series. I'm really loving playing old Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, like it is, I look forward to it every week, which is, I'm just like, man, I should have done this a long time ago, right? And fortunately, the first episode did great. The second episode started off not well, and it's made a nice comeback to be pretty decent, you know, uh, pretty good performance. So I'm glad to see that because like if nobody was watching it, obviously I couldn't do it, but I'm having fun with it. You guys seem to be liking it for the most part, the people who are watching it. Let me know right now, if you are watching at this point, you're probably a true fan of the channel. You know how we, we talk about it. We have, okay, onk. If you have not watched Wheeled Goat yet and you're watching at this point in the video, tell me why. You know, just whatever, like you, you just keep it, you know, just keep it real. Maybe you don't like dueling. Said, I just want to know why if you haven't tried it yet. If you have tried it, let me know what you think about it. Do you like it for, I mean, if you like, I mean, you've probably watched it. So let me know if it's something you want to see more. If, if there's something you were like wondering about or hoping that could be better, let me know what that would be. I know there's a lot of things I can improve on just in like the recording part. Like I cut off part of my screen stupidly like by accident that's going to be in the next episode too because i didn't notice i was doing it until like episode five which i haven't even recorded yet but i noticed and i'm preparing for episode five uh four was so bad though i might actually skip it so you might not actually see episode four so we'll see it might be the the, the missing episode uh we have white forest okay but i'm having so much fun with it and if you guys like it if we can keep it going and even if it's not necessarily that serious we could you know 
Even if we do a bunch of episodes of that, we can pivot into another cool series. I'm enjoying doing it and I hope that we can keep doing it. And I like the diversity it brings to the channel because I was honestly, I was a little bit like we've done so many openings and it just felt like we're just only doing openings. And I like to have some diversity like vlogs. We haven't done a ton of those recently. We will be doing one at Collecticon though, so keep an eye out for that. I have an idea too uh, for another thing that I'm going to do while I'm there that I think will actually make good content as well. So, but back to what I was saying, we're doing a lot of openings and collections. That's pretty much all we've done recently. And so I was like, man, I really want to diversify with something else, you know, so something different. Not be doing the exact same thing, because I think even if you are a fan of openings, you can get tired of 365 openings a year. Right. So if I throw in wheel goat once a week, I think that was what guess that price did really well. It was just something different, you know, and it was a lot of you guys liked it. And it was nice to have that once a week. And then you could th still have openings. They're more exciting when you see them because you're not seeing as many of them. And then, you know, collections can be sparse in there. That's three different kinds of things. If I can get vlogs, that's four. We can throw like, you know, Walmart vlogs and big vlogs where we're like the whole video is a vlog. Uh, that way you're getting like four different types of content and it's like more interesting. You know what I mean? That's kind of what I've been trying to do. That's what I'm always trying to do, really. It's just so it's not the same old, same old. Like, even with new sets, it helps that it's like a new set, it's a new opening, etc. New cards you've never seen before, but Millennium Shield number two. Only two in the case so far, which is pretty crazy. But yeah, that's what I'm trying to do with Wheeled Goat. I'm trying to, and then also I'm trying to have fun, you know, just have fun. Like, I've, I've been, you know, I watched somebody else do an opening. I'm thinking, you know, it'd be really fun to duel. And going on other people's channels is like, it's nice, but it's once every few months at, at most so i don't get to do it very often and that doesn't really scratch the itch for playing Yu-Gi-Oh, which i don't really have the itch to play like new Yu-Gi-Oh at all like you guys know i've tried it before i posted videos on the second channel rux and life and i put i told about my experience doing it and whatever and like that's fun i like doing the tournaments but fiendsmith and graver it is just keeping up with the meta is not something for me personally and i just really like being able to play the old cards you know we, that we see all the time i like playing with the old cards i like keeping my deck the same you know I, I can build a few different decks and not have to worry about you know the new ban list messing with it or the new release maybe we have to get rid of all my cards and that's i just love being able to do that and just the only thing I change is just upgrading my rarities. You know, that's cool. Like I can put more into the deck, etc. And that's what I like. I like Goat. I like Edison. I, I've even played some of that, whatever that format's called with Max C, where it's like 20, 2011, 2012. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Tengu Plant? Tengu Plant? Yeah. Even that I could get into. Because like, even though it has like Max C and stuff, at least like, it's just the same format. And you just keep playing it and you figure out how to play it. And you can kind of play with anybody when you're doing it so it, it's cool it's it, i don't know that's just a, a random rant uh, not even a, that's not a rant i guess just a ramble is what that was i'm not really ranting because i don't have a problem with meta or anything I, I know that people like it and i like to kind of sort of know what's going on at least what the big cards are but personally i don't want to actually like and another thing about it it's not only getting the cards but then you gotta actually like you gotta test big time to actually be good and, you know, I'm, I've never really been great at Yu-Gi-Oh in any in any way. And I just don't have time to do that. Like, I, it's it's funny because I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh content creator and I don't have time to play Yu-Gi-Oh. It's kind of funny how that works. Diabel, Diabelster? Diabelster? Not Diabelstar, Diabelster. Interesting. So, yeah, pretty interesting. Pretty interesting indeed. But that's just an, another thing. Dark Magician. Is that our first time pulling that today? We pulled one and maybe one or two. We actually maybe pulled two in the other boxes. Oh, also got my teeth off. I got the the things. I had a uh, Invisalign for a little bit over a year. Technically, I have a uh, retainer that I haven't I haven't actually gotten it yet. They have to send it or I have to get it in like a week or something. But pretty exciting actually. That went a lot faster. It felt like I had those for a lot shorter than over a year. Like most people would probably say it it was you know it felt like a long time, but to me it didn't feel like that long. So it's nice to be done though. It's really nice. Because my teeth at the time, I reason I got that was mostly because my teeth were actually bothering me. Like I was recording videos and I would talk and my teeth would just go bam, hit each other like the front and the bottom because my bite was messed up. It hurts so bad. And I would do it all the time because I, you know how I start talking too fast and I can't even breathe. I'm like, oh, I would do that. And then I'll go bam, hit my teeth together. And I just have to pause like, oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. So that's fixed, which is pretty good. I, I think it, that can still technically happen, but because they're actually aligned now. Uh, it won't happen. It, it, I'd have to like do something weird with my mouth for that to happen. So yeah, that's completely randomness that comes with these long openings. <laughs> the, the more podcast style of an opening. So yeah, just let me know your thoughts on whatever. Feel free in the comments. Feel free to let me know in the comments uh, whatever you want to say. I'll, tr I'll try to check them out. 
don't see every comment these days because you know honestly the comment section guys it's it can be brutal because here's what happens a short gets some views then there's a bunch of people commenting about how i'm like trying to be lean hard or whatever they're saying like that's you know or or this guy is excited over an eight dollar card what an idiot or this guy only cares about money which is the complete opposite by the way i hope you notice that only cares about money he do just does this to make money and then it's just it just gets annoying so then sometimes i'm like you know what i can't like a comments today you know that's like the, the tiny percentage like most of them are awesome and i like to see those where like hey man like or their constructive uh, feedback for the uh, the wheeled series. I always want to see those. But yeah, that's just, yeah, man. Those are some of the ones I've seen recently. I'm just like, really? Really? It's like, can you pick one? I either need to care only about money or I need to be trying to just fake reactions. The fake reactions is the one that's so annoying. It's like, I've never faked a reaction before. Like, you would know. If I wasn't excited, you would know. It, it, I would just be like, Okay, I, I have even done that sometimes. I'll get a card I'm not excited about, like it's a QCR. I'm like, eh, yeah, not excited about this one. I do that all the time. And it was really on the Sacred Beast one that people were getting a bunch of things. And I'm like, look, you've never watched me before. And I know this, everyone already knows this. Yes, they, they've never seen me before, so they're gonna say something dumb, but that doesn't mean it doesn't get annoying. I'm like, look, we spent years trying to pull Sacred Beast. It doesn't matter if it's an $8 or whatever the, the price tag is on it. And then the same people will come back and be like, he only cares about money. He just wants to, to, to all the money. He didn't care about the cards. It's like, oh my gosh. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. So that's a real rant. That's a real rant of things that have been annoying. And if you're watching at this point in the video, you've never made a comment like that because you're a real fan. Uh, so that's nice. That's nice. So yeah, enough about that. Enough ranting. It really is something that doesn't matter at all because these people are never gonna watch me again. They just made a comment on some random thing because they like scrolling by like, what an idiot, you know, who cares? This shouldn't matter, but it's just like, oh my gosh. Sometimes you see like multiple of those in a row and you're like, can you guys cut me some slack here, please? It's like, no, I'm not trying to be Leonhardt because I'm excited about a card. Not everyone who's excited about a card is Leonhardt. It's like, they've only seen one card opener before. It's so weird. Uh, I'm sure a lot of other other people get that as well, that open cards. They get like some Pokey Rev or Leonhardt. Just the only person the other, the, the commenter knows that you're apparently trying to be them because that's the only person they've ever heard of. So yeah, that, I feel I feel better now. I feel better just talking about it. <laughs> so yeah, you guys can uh, you guys can skip that part if you want. But of course, I mean you'd miss some epic infinite forbidden. So yeah, that that's that's what's happening. That's what's going on in the Ruxin, the Ruxin life. What else is going on? Oh, trying to pass Simo in, in RuneScape. It's never gonna happen because he won't let me catch up. He keeps he keeps saying, "Oh, I can't take a break. You're right behind me. I'm not even close to him. He's like a million experience in front of me. He's probably gonna be at 99." By the time you see this video, I'm at 97. He's at 98. He's he's gonna beat me. I got all the way to 97 though, and it's dude, it is terrible. Let me say, if you're ever gonna play old school RuneScape, just don't go to 99. It's not even worth it. It's it's awful. This current level I'm on, it was like 1.18 million experience to get to the next level by just one level. The next level is probably gonna be like 1.3 or 1.4 to get to to 99, which is gonna be like it'll be the the home stretch, so it'll feel a little better because it's like this is the last level, but. It's been brutal, man. It has been brutal. Long, I'm sure a bunch of you guys watching this probably have 99 room crafting and you're like, oh, wood cutting is so easy. I've done room crafting. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, it's freaking horrible. But yeah, it, it is It is bad. Room crafting, I'm never going to do it. I'm committed. Committed to never getting 99 uh, room crafting. I might not ever get another 99 in general. Wood cutting might be my only one. Mining, maybe because I can AFK, I can do the stars. I might do that. We'll see. We'll see how easy the stars are. The annoying part is you have to like look them up. I, I know you could, there's like a Discord or whatever, like you can follow it. But yeah, that's going to be annoying. Uh, No third QCR yet, please. Be in here. I'm going to be really sad if there's not a third QCR. Just throwing that out there. Back to the actual card opening. I'm going to be really sad. I feel like I'm actually streaming right now. Like, just talking about random things. Because tomorrow we're going to be talking about some random stuff. That's how it goes in the live streams. When they're five, six hours, we just start talking about, like, fast food or RuneScape or... What else will we talk? Let's try to predict. Well, if I predict it, you guys will see it. Then you'll know to talk about it. So it doesn't really... It's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I guess I would win because then you guys would talk about it. Or you could intentionally not talk about it so I wouldn't win. Interesting. Interesting that you say that. Okay. And also, I haven't really mentioned this in this video today. Don't forget, guys, at 250,000, I'm sure all you guys are subscribed already or are watching now. But if you're at 250,000, we are, at, when we're at 250,000, we're going to open every pack. 
excluding Terminal Revenge because I'm deleting that set from my life. Opening every pack. I'm just kidding. We'll open it. But every single pack at 250k. We're also opening a an opened box of Magician's Force to pull Dark Magician Girl and many other things. It's going to be insane. We're about 12,000 away, which is a decent amount. But if you hit that subscribe button, we will get there that much faster. I'm really excited for it. I'm pumped to pull some great cards and record a two and a half hour long video. That's probably how long it's going to be. I think the last one was two hours something two hours and 10 maybe i don't remember the first one was a little longer i think actually because i was it long well maybe not i don't remember how long it was but it's gonna be a long video it's gonna be super fun i'm pumped to record it where's the cute you've got to be freaking kidding me there better be a third qcr in here i'm not gonna be happy about this come on don't give us another two qcr box or case i should say we've only pulled one today we should have we've already pulled another one in another video that's two we need one more come on come on come on come on that's not it please 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 bless us with one more qc oh how about a third millennium shield that's dope this is literally like 10 or 12 packs left please just be less some last pack magic shenanigans going on right now do not be do not be holding us holding us back again please no do not do it do not do it fiendsmith in paradise okay I'm not going to be in paradise with only two QCRs. Not at all. I'm going to be really sad, actually. Okay, Windu Temple. Yeah. Windu, Windu. How many of those do we have? Maybe like two. Maybe cool. Oh, I'm getting nervous now. I'm getting big nervous. Come on. See something shiny. Ragnarika. Wicked Butterfly. The Wicked Butterfree. Send some luck right now in the comments, guys. Dia Belster. Send some luck. Bless us with something crazy. We need Frontline to pull something good. I don't want to bring them back another two QCR case. That's going to be depressing. I'm scared. Not like this. It's 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 even worse when it's not yours. When it's yours, it's like, you know what? It sucks, but I don't have to tell anybody, you know? <laughs> I can just, well, you guys would know, but like, I don't have to be like, yeah, you actually only got two QCRs. It's so it's kind of like doing box breaks. So when I open a box break and you get like a one ultra box or something like that, it's so much worse than when... Oh, then when you do it, oh, five packs left, five packs left. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Literate blaze. Oh, my gosh. Please be in the last four packs. Come on. <sighs> Three left. What if it's one name shield? There's got to be one in here. There's got to be one. No. No, it no. There's no way we got two in a row. Well, I guess we had two last time, so it'd be a two out of three, but this is gonna save us. The last pack magic, Exodia Obliterate. Come on, guys, send me some luck. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Go check out Frontline if you have not already. They're local to me uh, in Tennessee. So send them my condolences if this is not a QCR. Let's go. We have three and one. Broomy, Madolce, Madolce Dessert, Fiendsmith Sequence, Aerial Leader. Legend, the League of Uniform Nomenclature, and oh, it's an ultra. Two QCRs of dead. No, <laughs> it's so painful. How does that happen? Come on, Konami. Oh, there was three per case. Apparently, it's two to four because we've had four before. We've got. We've had two. So that's that's unfortunate. We did at least pull the Millennium Shield today. We will be opening a lot more cases tomorrow to pull that Millennium Shield QCR. I mean, a lot more cases, even more than Terminal Revenge. I got a lot this time, so be there. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Ernesto Dian, America Deutscher, KK Beats, Brandon Cheney, Ian Musa Jr. Barding, Robert F., Chang Lang, and Adelso Garcia Jr. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.